I've got Sigmund Freud. Alright, so his um, early life, he was born in Freiburg, Rovia on May 6, 1856. Um, he was the first child of his father, Jacob Freud's third wife, Amelia Freud. Um, he was raised in the Jewish religion, um, religions, traditions, and beliefs. Uh, he considered himself a Jew um, despite his negative attitude towards religion. And his father was a wool, a wool merchant. He was a serious student. Um, he graduated high school, and um, he had a, like a real big need for recognition from his father and people above him. Um, in his education, um, basically, he dreamed of becoming um, a general, like um, some of his childhood heroes, Hannibal and Napoleon, um, or like Oliver Cromwell as a minister of the state. Um, however, he ended up choosing a medical. Um, he graduated from the University of Vienna in 1881 after about eight years um, from his start. Um, during three of those years, he did a year in the service. He translated a German edition of John Stuart Mills and did some biological research um, under Ernest Bruck. Um, and during that time, he maintained his position as a godless Jew. In his uh, early career, he did six years of research at the uh, Brock Research Institute. During that time, he did research on god mole structure of eels and developed gold chloride method for staining nerve cells. He ended up leaving because he wanted a, uh, an assistantship, assistantship position and two younger men ended up getting that instead of um, and then the next three years, he worked through different departments of Vienna and General Hospital, um, including the psychiatric clinic of Theodore Maynard. Uh, this is important because it's where he received his first hysterical um, patient. Does anyone, before I tell you what hysteria is, does anybody know what hysteria is? No? Okay. Well, um, Basically, hysteria um, is uh, thought only to affect women uh, because it's associated with the movement of a woman's uterus throughout different locations in the body, in which the term hysteria comes from, um, because it comes from the Greek word hysteria, meaning uterus. Um, and basically, there's just different symptoms with it, um, uh, like the term being hysterical, um, Think of somewhere in here. Um, but basically, I chose the Bible verse to go along with the hysteria um, to kind of combat who would think as Christians as we need to do. Um, Philippians 4 6 through 7 uh, says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And basically, hysteria is the exact opposite and you're just you're anxious for everything and um, he was very interested in hysterical patients um, basically he had a little time of drug use um, he started using cocaine in 1884 he began advocating for the drug because he found it helped feelings of depression and it helped him work he wrote six papers about its benefits um, within two years um, and he gave it to other people like his sister, his fiance, and a friend named Ernest von Blitchell, which ended up dying of co okay, cocaine addict in 1891. Um, unfortunately, he actually did not become an addict himself of cocaine. He actually ended up becoming an addict um, of nicotine later on. Um, but during uh, 1885, the addiction began be reported and um, his colleagues ended up censoring him um, for his application of cocaine and he ended up with heart arrhythmias and he did not end up stopping smoking, he continued smoking the rest of his life. Um, his more predominant career uh, started in 1885 when he was appointed a privadozent at the University of Vienna. Um, he ended up receiving a grant to study hysteria hypnosis under Jean Charcot. Um, 
such as male hysteria, and basically that's just hysteria, and then, um, and it's just strange because of it being a woman type. Condition and um, in 1886 he started a private medical practice in Vienna um, with a specialty in hysteria. And he started treatment treatment with baths, massage, electrotherapy, the rest cures for three years. Um, and then in 1889 he began using um, hypnosis. And when he realized hypnosis was not a valid uh, treatment for everyone, he began using the psychoanalytic technique, which in this technique. Um, it works with the unconscious factors that affect current mental states. Um, he, des he described projection from a patient onto a therapist as transference, and the therapist responds as counter-transference. Um, in his personal life, he had, he had a wife named Martha <coughs> Bernays. He ended up with six children, Matilda, Jean, Martin, Oliver, Ernest, Sophie, and Anna. And Anna actually ended up being a um, very successful psychologist. Um, one of her contribute, contributes being uh, the field of child psychoanalysis. And that's him and his daughter, Anna. Um, he had some publications. Uh, he had studies on hysteria, the interpretation of dreams, the psychopathology of early life, three essays on the theory of sexuality, fragment of an analysis of a case of hysteria, Ego and the id, civilization and the discontents, Moses and uh, monotheism. Um, he had several um, pretty big contributes. Um, he had the seduction theory, which is defined as the emphasis on the causative impact of nurture, uh, the shaping of the mind by experience. Likewise, this theory held that hysteria and obsessional neurosis are caused by repressed memories of the Infatal and infantile sexual abuse. Um, another one was his uh, psychopathology of every day, um, which he considered another road to the unconscious. And those were things like um, little mess ups in your speech, or you write something down and you meant something else. Um, one of the examples was an Oxford don who toasted his um, his queer dean instead of his dear queen. Um, he, and Freud said that there was something to that, that we were just, if we messed up, it was, on, it was almost on purpose in our brains. Um, free association, um, which is the technique that attempts to make mental connections and acts of cognizing, imagining, remembering, thinking, and emoting. Um, okay. So, some of the bigger ones um, that we'll go a bit more in depth in are dream interpretation. Um, we call this a via rugia, which is a royal road to the unconscious. Um, he looked into and interpreted dreams as unconscious wishes and desires that were repressed. Um, and during the interpretation, he looked at the events, situations, things, and peoples in those dreams. And within that, he derived some sort of meaning out of that, that it's part of our unconscious. And, um, that it really, it really meant something.